Welcome to Adventures with a Very Small Lathe. Last time I machined the register into the back of the faceplate spindle to fit onto the spindle mount of the lathe. I'm now doing the rough turning to bring the rest of the spindle down to size, but I'm having serious problems with chatter. I don't know how exactly what type of steel this is as it came from a batch of cheap offcuts, but it seems harder than pieces from the same batch I've machined before. I'm also concerned that this part, this long and heavy, may be too much weight for the lathe, combined with the large third putty chuck and the thick heavy backplate I made. I'm going to have to rethink how I machine this part, so in the meantime I'm going to go back to working on the faceplate itself, which doesn't have the same length problem. I tried a couple of different approaches to get the best possible finish on the plate itself, as it's essentially impossible to keep the cutting speed within the right range for the tool with such a wide variation in diameter. The first attempt with a high speed steel left a very rough finish, which is probably because the tool grind is the wrong shape. I mostly in use insert tooling, so I haven't put much effort into getting the HSS grinding right. My second pass with the brand new carbide insert was a lot better, but I still have problems with the cutting speed being too slow towards the centre. I don't seem to be able to run this slave fast enough for carbide tooling to cut well on faces within about 20mm diameter.
The centre is going to be threaded to attach onto the spindle, so needs a centre hole for an 8mm thread, but that's not the reason I'm centering and drilling it this now. I'm near the end of what I can do with this part mounted in the four jaw chuck. The outer edge is held in the jaws, so impossible to machine, and there is no way I could have cut off this part this size on such a small lathe. The cross light has nowhere near enough travel. I did a quick finishing pass of the other side of the plate before moving on. To machine the edges of the faceplate I need a way to chuck it. The centre hole isn't going to be large enough for jaws, so I need a way to mount it on a mandrel made for this purpose. I could hold the mandrel using a collet, but that would leave the edge of the plate unsupported and very likely to chatter. Instead I decided on making a combined mandrel and draw bar, to hold the part central while also pulling it back against the jaw faces of the four jaw chuck. I'm chucking up a piece of scrap steel with as little run out as possible. I'll drill this as a guide for the draw bar, but it also ensures the jaws are firmly held in place, all equidistant from the centre. If the jaws weren't all equally tight, there wouldn't be a reliable reference to rest the plate against.
The scrap for the guide is 303 stainless, which work hardens, so I have to be even more careful than usual drilling and reaming it. This lathe doesn't have much torque, so can jam easily. The tailstock uses a B12 chuck taper instead of full length morse, so it's pretty easy to overload it, make it slip and damage the taper. I threaded some 6mm mild steel stock off camera and used it to mount the plate as I described earlier. Cleaning up the outer edge requires mounting a left hand tool in an unconventional way as the cross slide doesn't have enough travel otherwise. It took a lot of very small cuts to clean up the scale as it's very easy to stall the lathe of this diameter. So I sped it up so you can see how many I got without getting bored. There was one very low pit in the scale, which meant I had to keep cutting for longer than expected before I had a clean cut over the whole surface. As the part is resting on the jaws for stability, and the edge of the jaws are just outside the faceplate diameter, I had to stop just short of the back. I had planned to keep clean up the back and chamfer it by turning the part around. For the finished pass I ran the lathe as fast as I could to get the cleanest possible cut from the tool, then switched to a chamfer tool to clean the edge. Unfortunately I found that the mandrel left me with more run out than I was expecting and it proved difficult to correct. 
I could probably have centered the part properly by adjusting the jaws to move the center of the mandrel, but I didn't think of that until later. For now, I just removed most of the mater excess material, then rechucked the part directly to chamfer the edge. The final finish of the outer edge could wait until the faceplate is mounted on its own spindle. In the meantime, the part is cleaned up enough to machine the features on into the face. Come back next time when I'll be machining the mounting grooves and holes in the faceplate using my very small milling machine.